This meeting is being recorded. Wow. <laughs> we started last week with uh, why we should study uh, the word of God, right? Um, so between last week and uh, your thought process today, what in your mind, what comes to your mind uh, first when you think about that? You know, why should anyone study the word of God? Second Timothy 2.15. You're going you're gonna to elaborate Timothy on it? You, you're going to elaborate and tell oh. us that it say study? <laughs> got to show yourself a few uh, yeah. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, that's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> oh, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Yes. I got to start slow. I, you get it to build, it builds up. Oh, well, let me tell you, that was perfect. That was perfect because uh, why should we study? Because the Bible tells us to do that, right? And it says to study to show yourself approved unto God, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's letting us know that it's not about um, anything else but God. Uh, that's the root, right? That is the root. It goes on to say a workman doesn't need to be ashamed when he's rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Right? Uh, we figure out in the word that there is only one truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth. The way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We cannot come any other way except through me. Right? So, Second Timothy, good scripture, good start. Uh, study to show thyself approved. The Bible declares that we should study. All right. Anything else? We have the Bible declares, and also so that we're not deceived by oh, that oh, which oh. is not right. You know because. It, 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 Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So if we're not really, uh, you know, reading and making the word of God alive to us, we uh, may be deceived. Okay. Let's, and, and, and listen, that goes back straight to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning with that, right? Genesis. Uh, uh, Jay, if you could give me Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter three. Uh, verse uh, four or five. In fact, if I was to begin, uh, it does say to study to show thyself approved. I would start with so that we as saints are not deceived. In other words, uh, when, you, when you read Genesis three, four and five, Jay, I'll let you read that and then I will talk about it. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. We shall be as gods, and we will not surely die. But, you know, Satan came, right? He snuck in, and he introduced doubt, and he introduced unbelief into Eve's life, right? So she, she the, the, the word was spoken, right? The word was spoken and she knew what it was. And then he came in, he crept in, changed a couple of ways he said something, that God said something, right? And then she, uh-oh, she ate that apple, right? <laughs> I'm gonna say that great. <laughs> Whatever she ate, she ate it. And uh mm -hmm. Were their eyes open? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But we opened up a can of worms, did we not? So what we see is we blatantly disrespect and deny the word of God, right? We deny the word of God and we continue through down through the years. I'm trying to let people in here. We continue down through the years. Uh, in one form or another, to do that same thing, right? 
you see the saints, we're not equipped. We don't know the word of God. And the little bit that we know, we allow somebody to come in somewhere and just take it right from us. Snatch the little bit that we do know, twist it up. And then we find ourselves in a jam, right? Uh, Jay, turn to Jude uh, 1, Jude the first chapter. And you're going to read uh, 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 the, the fourth verse. First chapter, the fourth verse? Of Jude, Jude 1, 4. For there are certain men crept mm -hmm. in unawares mm -hmm. who were before of old ordained to this mm -mm, condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so Jude 1 and 4, right? If I, could, if I can explain that. Certain people <laughs> whose condemnation, who was uh, knowingly long ago, uh, ungodly people, right? Ungodly people crept in amongst us, all right? And then perverted the grace of God. Like we can't even tell the truth about the Bible. We can't talk about the grace of God, right? Because as soon as we talk about the grace of God, somebody creeps in and tells you different things uh, and it causes you to say, okay, uh, grace cannot be grace, right? Grace can't be grace uh, and they openly, right? But you don't notice it, right? But they'll openly deny the work of the cross. They will, to deny the grace of God, right? Is to deny the work on the cross. And instead we come in, we put faith down and we throw works in there. Mm. Works begin to supersede grace and we deny the power of the blood. And we allow people mm. to continue to tell us that. And then it alters our walk with God. It alters the way in which we should know and understand God. How does that happen? Because we don't study. We don't study. And then what we do is we take the word that the bishop has spoken. We take the word that the pastor has spoken. We take the scripture as the pastor has given it, right? And as the pastor has applied it to a particular context, right? We don't know that context. We just know what the pastor said. And once we know what the pastor has said, we take that and we roll with it. So the pastor told me this, the bishop told me that. I know it's that because I heard my bishop say that, right? And we never, ever, <laughs> we never, ever take the time to sit down and study. And I didn't just say, read the word of God. I said, study the word of God. Huge difference, right? You can go home and take the context of pastor, the bishop, the preacher, the teacher, the Bible study teacher, right? They give you a word. They give you maybe a scripture, right? They might take Romans 12, 1 and 2. You go home with Romans 12, 1 and 2, and you have those two, those two verses, right? But to study it would be to find out who it was talking to in the first place, who it applies to, right? What does the verses before and after say? What do the chapters before and after say? Why? Because it brings about a total meaning the totality of the context so that you can better understand what it really was saying. And you can say, you know, my pastor started me off there. Let me go and compare that thing to what the con context is in the scripture. And then you become a learned, studied, born again believer. Learn, studied, born again believer. Not a lay member who depends and leans on and depends on the pastor. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I think uh, sometimes that uh, it's a control issue, right? You allow me 
to have more control over you when you do not study. Yeah, does that make sense to everybody? If you do not study the scriptures on your own, you have to come to me with every issue, with every problem, with every situation, and I have to guide you in every and step. Become a, That's right. And become and so an excessive I, burden. And not only, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and become a kind of a burden also. Not only you have to depend on the person for everything, but that becomes burdensome to someone mm -hmm. who has so many souls to kind to be watchful for about honor, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't mean it. Yeah. I didn't know how this thing works, so I, I should mean to Jay. I'm just gonna okay, no up. worries. No worries. You good? Amen. That's the truth, you know. And um, uh, a person like uh, me, right? Try to remain humble. It does become excessive. It becomes laboring, right? When you have to hear everybody's cries uh, because they didn't study the word to get that strength they need, right? You didn't study the word to get the joy you need to get through the day. Mm -hmm. You didn't get what you needed to survive. And so you came to get it from me. And I'm pouring out and pouring out and pouring out until I have nothing left, right? And then I'm looking to y'all because you guys have the same spiritual gifts. Everybody has the gift, the proper gifts that are needed for this body and to edify this body. And when I can safely say, listen, I'm being edified as well, we're doing something, right? The pastor needs to be edified as well. And is nothing, there's nothing short of uh, what we need. It's just that we're not willing to labor in the gospel. You know, we have to be willing to labor in the gospel. If nothing else, it is your morning medicine. It is your daily bread. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is necessary for us to function. If you think about the natural body, right? The natural body, we don't get up and not think about eating all day. How many times does a meal cross your mind? A snack cross your mind? Uh, some kind of substance, substance, water, anything cross your mind uh, in a day to say, oh, I need to eat. True for the matter, uh, we won't even starve if we didn't eat today or tomorrow, right? But we certainly think in the natural that, hey, it's time to eat. It's time to eat. The spiritual walk with Christ uh, is we're unequipped when we don't study. We, we literally disarm ourselves from whatever it is to come. Oh my God. Disarm. <laughs> That's a bad thing. So it's not like we stuck on stupid. We actually are walking in reverse. Right, so that's that's a deficit. It'd be it'd be cool, okay, if I'm if I'm if I'm you know if the lifeline is you know doing something, but if I'm at zero, I'm flatlining, I'm dying, malnutrition. If I don't get a word in me, if I don't study, if I don't meditate on the word of God, there is, what is in me? What is in me? What, what can we do with that? Pastor, can I add something real quick? Absolutely. If you're not able to receive back what you've deposited into the people, where does that leave you? You right. get what I'm saying? We, I can Absolutely. deposit $20 into the bank account and then I try to withdraw $40. That's going to put me in a deficit instead of deficit. a surplus. Deficit. So it's imperative that as, you know, I'm, I'm no pastor at all, but bless the name of our God. But as you pour into the people um, and, and you're, you know, you're equipping them, you're equipping them not just for them to pour into others, but also to also pour back into you as well. Because you as, a, as the leader, you can only go but so far on E if you're pouring out but there's nothing being poured back into you. I uh -huh. experienced something one time a few years ago. I was leading praise and worship at my church. And honestly, the prayer was so good. We could only do one song. Uh -huh. and, down. and as uh -huh. the one song was going and, and the way to God's glory literally hit us and 
and, and, and caused us to, you know, prostrate <laughs> before him. I remember I was standing up on the stage and I began to hold my chest. I began to hold my chest uh. and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I looked at my pastor's son and I signaled him and I walked right on off, went outside uh. the doors into the outside of the church. And a lady came behind me and I said, I can't breathe. She said, I can't breathe. I said, no, 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 no. I cannot breathe. And uh. so at that point she went and got leadership and, and, and leadership came and I fell to my knees and I began to cry because I didn't understand whether it was a, an attack of the enemy, whether it was something that I may have drunk or ate before prior, or whether it was literally God trying to basically uh, uh, answer the request of, Father, we need your glory, send it down. I don't know which one it was at the time. And so after they prayed, I remember um, later that week, I was speaking to a friend of mine who's a world known gospel artist, um, Isaiah Templeton. And we were talking and, and I told him exactly what had happened. And he, the spirit of God, literally at the same time, uh. I said, don't you speak. I figure I know what it is. And he said, okay, you tell me. And so what it was, was he said, the problem of the matter is that you're always speaking life into people, but you don't have nobody to reciprocate it back to you to the same measure uh. or better. And I just wanted to say that, that, that we as people of God and that are in leadership position, when we can get to the place and to, to the level and even the capacity to where we're able to not just deposit, not able to just deposit, I felt heaven pulling on me right there, not able to just deposit, but also to receive yeah. as well, because I'm a giver. I don't know how to really receive. Uh, it might not make sense, but I, I, I give and I give and I give. I'm the type of person, I'll text you every day just to check up on you. And you can text me twice a year and I'll still text you. You see, th that's a perfect example of, of pouring out and pouring into, but you're not getting the same mm -hmm. deposited back into you. So I just mm -hmm. want to add that little right there. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, no, that's a real testimony for a lot of us. You know, there's a lot of givers and there's a lot of takers. That's just bottom line, you know? And uh, sometimes you find yourself, um, I, I say it like this, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers mm -hmm. are few, right? And we start laboring, harvest is wide, wide open. Go get it, go get it, go get it. Mm -hmm. Give, 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 and then it's very, very hard to receive. And then the strong kind of sometimes go unnoticed. You know, it's like uh, who's praying for for the pastor, right? Yeah. I'm not talking about pillars of truth though, because <laughs> we good over here. Right, 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 right. Say, Collectively I speaking, yeah, I understand that. You know, there are a lot of times that uh, those of us that are strong, uh, and the Bible declares that those are strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Right. So it's no, it's no, it's no mistake uh, that we do what we do. Uh, but at the same time, we all have to be careful. We all have to play our part. We all have to do our job. And the first thing we must do as Christians is study that part. Right. So again, we talk about a couple of things, right? So you won't be deceived. Uh, we study because number one, the Bible declares that we study to show ourselves approved. Uh, 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 Brother Ted said, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, right? And then we went uh, so that we don't be deceived. Then we go back to the beginning where the serpent deceived Eve, right? That it was so from the beginning. So the Bible declares and shows that we must be equipped so that we do not become deceived, right? What's another reason we must study? Personal development. Sorry. Personal what? Okay. Development. Okay, hold on. I got development. Hold on. Let me write this down. Development. Witnessing. I heard mm -hmm. witnessing. <laughs> and, oh yeah, I would like. I've say. had Jehovah Witness come. I've had. I've had just about a little bit of everybody come to my door. So you, you got to be prepared because they know the Bible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, they know they know exactly what part they want to talk about too. <laughs> Go ahead. Am Dan. I in there? Yes, you are. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm thinking about Bible study itself uh, because I'm thinking. In in fact, I think this is perhaps a perfect kind of scenario because you have eight participants, but you, you you're interacting, so you're feeding off of one another. You're depositing, and you at the same time you're getting eight. something. Uh, you know, and that I don't I don't think it's you can replace that. 
And you know, uh, that's right. just that's right. This, this kind of uh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and ah. iron sharpening iron and those types of concepts. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. this is important to me, you know. Uh, okay, okay. So so this right here, Bible study, right? Uh uh Jay, go to uh John 16, 13. John 16, 13. Well, I should yeah, do that, Pastor. I just want to say I was on a previous Bible study who was doing the same thing, same topic, some of the same I points. See. It seems like everybody's goal now, because you know, of the time and the hour uh, that we're living oh. in this critical hour, the gifts should have been functioning. You know, sometimes <laughs> people say, Oh, you know, it's praying time. I'm like, no, I don't agree. It should have you shouldn't have stopped. Uh-huh. <laughs> you shouldn't have stopped. The gifts are always. They should always be functioning. So I'm, you know, I just had to throw that in there that you know everyone is basically on the same yes, page sir. all yes, across sir. the U.S. All across mm -hmm. the U.S. Yeah, you sound like uh, Pastor Keith. You know, she said, <laughs> say all the time, the power we could be displaying right now. We, Absolutely. We, we, we behind. We behind. Yes, way behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John sixteen thirteen. Jesus said, "I'll be it." when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come hmm. Hmm. so the spirit of god right <clears throat> it keeps us from wrongly dividing the word so in other words, we have to rightly divide the word of God. In order for you to do so, you need the spirit of God, right, inside of you. It is not a head thing. It is not a head thing. It's a heart thing, right? This is a spiritual matter. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the letter kills. The letter killeth, but the spirit gives life, right? So you think you might know, you know, when you are Catholic and you go through catechism, that's what they call it, I think, right? You go through catechism, you got to read the Bible from cover to cover, and they give you, I think, a year to do it, right? So you read it from cover to cover, and you say, hey, I learned about the Bible, I got the history of the Bible, I got the, and you have not the spirit, you have not nothing, right? Right, so let's make that clear. The spirit will bear witness to what is reading, it, it will regurgitate, it will give it back in due season. So when you are witnessing that Jehovah's witness, what you put in will come out. That's right. Right? And the spirit won't give you nothing different. So what are we doing then? We are operating in the spirit of God. We are operating inside of the will of God. To operate any other way, we're not really operating. We wasting somebody's time. Wasting a lot of people's time. Uh, the biggest thing we got to take away tonight, right, is if you, if, if I can light a match up under you and say, yo, at some point in our day, every single day, we got to think it is time to study. It's time to study. I got to get, it's not weekly. It's really not. It's, you're not doing anything. Uh, uh, for yourself, right? You're not you're not doing anything. You're not doing yourself any type of uh, good thing to study once a week. To say, you know what? I'm gonna take time out today and I'm gonna study. <laughs> no, no, you missing it. You missing it. You missing it. It's not a, a, a sacrificial. It's an obedience. Okay, an obedience is better than sacrifice. It's not. So we have to study. It's not a maybe I should today or let's fast and study inside of the fast. No, no. We are Christians. That is our walk. That is our call. That is our duty. And there's nothing else. No, listen, I don't even know what else you can do if you're not studying. I don't know you. Okay, if I could show you what you look like in the spirit, right? Uh, you're 38 years old and you got a big old diaper on. You 38 years old, you got a big old diaper on, and you got, you got, you, you remember Favorite Flav? He used to have this necklace on with a clock, but you got a big old pacifier right there hanging on your neck, tied with a shoestring so that you can suck it every now and then 
when something comes your way, you don't know what to do. You got to put the pacifier in your mouth, right? You complaining, your diaper wet. You don't even know how to change your diaper. You know, Paul said, you are like one that should be eating meat, but I have to continue and keep going over this first things over again. We drinking milk still when we ought to be eating meat. Why? Because we won't, we don't understand the simple doctrines to study. The doctrine, a doctrine is just a belief. It's the principle by which we live. And we live by the word study, right? That's the first thing he says, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. This walk ain't even got nothing to do with us. It has absolutely nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with everybody else. It has everything to do with pleasing God. It has everything to do with edifying the body of Christ. It has everything to do with witnessing. It has everything to do with being equipped. So when the devil comes, when he desires to sift us as wheat, our faith cannot fail. Our faith cannot fail in any situation, right? If you are tested here, if you are tempted here, if you are tried here, your faith cannot fail. And it will, if it lacks. It will, if it lacks. You would simply say, I'm a child of God, I'm winning, right? When it comes time to win, you don't have any tools to pull out to survive the storm. You don't have nothing to go on. Fumes, no gas in the tank. No word, no nothing. Just, just, is I don't even know if you could tell the difference between a Christian who does not study and a non-believer. Say that again. I don't know if you can tell the difference between a Christian who does not study and a non-believer. Because when that same trial come to the non-believer or the believer, nobody's equipped. Nobody's equipped. Um, Okay, James uh, 125. Jay, go to James 125. Not only do we need to study, right? We study to get the principles of God, right? We study to know the mind of God, right? So that we can rightfully and know when to apply the word of God to our life. If you don't know it, you can't apply it. If you have the ingredients uh, to resist the devil, right? We, we, we would think that we needed to fight the devil. And the Bible never said mm. fight the devil. It said resist the devil and he will flee from you. But if you don't know that, right? If you don't know that, you just lost for no reason. Because lack of knowledge, my people perish from lack of knowledge. Go ahead and read that scripture, Jay. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, mm. this man shall be blessed in his deed. Everything you do, you will be blessed. If you can read it and apply it, everything you do, you'll be blessed. My God. Everything. Uh, Psalms, go to Psalms 19. Psalms 19, read 7 through 11. We read a lot of scripture last week, so I'm trying not to repeat anything from last week, you know, but last week was so good. So, so good. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm. converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, <laughs> making mm. the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing in the heart. Mm -hmm. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening in the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring mm. forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Are uh, you read to 11? Oh, my bad. 
More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also are they than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. What you say? You said the word of the Lord is perfect. Huh? We said it is what is more desired than gold? Mm -hmm. Sweeter, Sweeter than, than honey in the honeycomb? <laughs> what you say? Uh, how, how much should we desire that? <sighs> how much should we desire the word of God? It's perfect for our edification, for our maturity, right? We can take the diaper off, right? Take 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 the, the, the pacifier from around your neck, right? You can stop whining and crying. You can stand up, put your suit on, put your dress on, put your heels on, ladies, right? And you can walk up right. And you're like, hey, hey, I know what I'm doing, <laughs> right? I know where I'm going. And anybody in my way can go with me, <laughs> right? So I, I love uh, that scripture, Psalms 19, 7 through 11. Read that again and meditate on that. I just wanted to give you that one for free because that's how good the word of God is. If you, it, hey, if I offered you gold or the word, what would you take? The word. A bag of gold or the word of God. Huh? Oh, huh? Uh, will anybody take the gold? Just tell the truth. No, I'm gonna take the word because the gold gonna run that's, out. That's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. That is uh, are you telling the truth? Huh? No, it ain't tough. You know it ain't. <laughs> I don't even wear it. God's gold. economy is all gold. Cattle hey. is <laughs> that part right there if you only knew uh the, the word is life yes it the is the word is life yes when 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 uh we was reading the book of acts right i don't know if y'all got to that part yet in the minister's class but we talked about uh uh, uh i believe it was peter and john uh the lame man was at the the, the, the gate and he was he was asking for gold and money and arms that's what the bible say arms and Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Stand up and walk. Take up that bed and walk. This man got up hopping. I know if he could cuss, he would have and said, forget <laughs> the gold. Forget the gold. I got my legs, right? I have the word of life. I have life in me that I did not have for years. All right? That was free, y'all. That was free. Uh, Acts 17, 11. Talking about being deceived, right? By false teachings. Acts 17, 11. These were no, more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So they, so you said... These people were noble in character, right? Why were they noble in character? Uh, because when they received the word, I preached it to them, right? I preached it to them. And they received it happily, right? With great eagerness. And then what did they do? They went and examined the scripture. So they heard the word. They received it and they still went and examined it. To see if it was true. To see if what Paul said was true. You cannot be deceived if you go back and examine that thing, right? Uh, read uh, uh, 1 John 4 1. That's why they did it. Because of 1 John 4 1. <clears throat> Beloved, believe not every spirit, but uh -huh. try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Say that part again. Many false prophets are gone out. You have to study. There is no alternative, because the Bible did not say you may or might be approached 
by false prophets. It said many, many false prophets have gone out into the world. So you have to test the spirit by the word of God. Okay, go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I'm just going with scripture now because we got about 15 more minutes and I just want you to be understanding. Says 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Mm -hmm. This is why we should study. Yes, ma'am. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Why I can't find it all of a sudden. Yep, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Okay, I'm almost there. Bear with me. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, 3, 16 and, 16 and 17. Uh -huh. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now that one you could take to the bank, okay? That is a main doctrinal scripture because it ain't half the scripture, it is the whole loaf that we gotta swallow, right? It's all scripture is God inspired. All scripture is God inspired and it's useful for various things, not one thing, mm -hmm. a few things, right? We teach with the word. We correct with the word. We train with the word. We instruct with the word. Why? So that the person that's dedicated to God, you and I, right, can be capable and equipped in everything we do absolutely everything we do thoroughly capable and thoroughly equipped for every good work uh uh brother ted was talking about uh, us being in the bible study right mm -hmm. uh second timothy 2 2 mm -hmm. You, you, you bought they already, right, Jay? Second Timothy mm -hmm. <laughs> Teach others to be better prepared to answer. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 2, 2. I'm here, babe. And Go the ahead. things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the mm -hmm. same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Hey, so we are helpers one to another. That's right. Amen. Helpers one to another. First Peter 3.15. We can do this all day, right? <laughs> this is what it's about. First Peter 3.15. Okay. Oh, hey, and, and but read, sanctify this, the Lord. Read, read, read it slow. Read it slow. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that uh -huh. has asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear right so we have to be equipped capable taught trained ready to give an account for that which we believe I would, I would venture to say, right, if I was, uh, if we were all mathematical geniuses and out of 100% of the body of Christ, I would say we are paralyzed, paralyzed. I would strongly say about 75 to 80% of the body of Christ is paralyzed and cannot get an answer, cannot get a strong answer answer for what we believe and why if if y'all looked at me and, and heard what i just said i if i represented the body of christ i would be sitting in a wheelchair i would be in a wheelchair unable to walk using my arms to roll me around 
because I said 75%, right? So the, the bottom part of my body is gone. Uh, somewhere up to maybe my, my chest. And I'm rolling around and I require help all day, every day. Mm. That's what the body of Christ looks like when we don't study. We can't give an account of for nothing. People get away with saying whatever they want to us, how they want, because we don't have an answer. And then we try to defend it and say, oh, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with that nonsense. what you say? <laughs> if you had an answer, you would. Mm -hmm. Go to Matthew 4 and 4. We almost done. <laughs> Matthew 4 and 4. Huh. And read it slow. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We will not live this journey, this walk in the natural. We won't make it. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, every word, that all by itself. Uh, let me give you two more scriptures and we'll be out of here. Uh, I think, unless we, if I feel like she read them good, say that, let's say that. Um, if I feel like we can understand it when she read it, I could keep moving. But if I feel like it needs an explanation, I'll give you one. But I know that last one, Matthew 4 and 4, y'all got that, right? We, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Colossians 3.17. Mm, why we should study the word of God. Colossians 3.17. Anything tonight. It's a good one too. It's a good one. I gave y'all some good sound scripture tonight. Colossians 3.17. You talk to Pastor Pete. <laughs> if I why could just study? say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, while she find that scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was sitting here and I was just uh, thinking, you know, uh, what's just sitting right um, in my spirit is uh, the word need. Um, and if we look up the word need, it's a necessity, um, you know, and I just can't even get a, a, away from it because we, we, we need so many things, you know. But studying the word of God, there is a need for the word of God. Um, and as we grow in God, uh, we understand that the need is significant, that you can't even breathe on a day to day without the word of God. You cannot even respond without the word of God. Not only does it teach us, it helps us, like you said, uh, just like food we eat, it helps us to go and do what it is. But daily, uh, we, we forget the need to study. We forget the need to meditate. We forget that that this is a need. And, and some people just say, I do it just to do it. But when you understand what need means, uh, you know, it, it says need means requires something because it is essential or very important. And therefore the word is essential for this life. It's important that we study. Um, and so when I heard you speaking, uh, the spirit was just like, it's needed. It's the need. And when we understand and establish that the need is the word of God in our mind daily, yo, we will go every day. I mean, it's not a day you won't pick up your word. It's not a second that you won't go to. Even a thought will bring you to the word of God. And yes. some people say, how is that so? When you wrap yourself up in God and you wrap yourself up and have this relationship, you, I mean, it literally a word can be said and the word is right there. That's how good God is. So I, I'm just, I'm excited because the spirit says I, it's the word to study. It is a need. 
Mm. Studying is a need. It shouldn't be for you. I want it. No, it's a need. Like I need that. I need it to get me through the day. I need it to get me through. Uh, This person acted up and that I need it. Oh my God. So I praise God for just being able to identify why the study, because I need it. That's, it's just that. Let me tell you something from the front, from the, from the pulpit to the back door. Uh, yes. the pastor to just the lay member to the right. lecture, to whatever y'all want to call insignificant I don't know everything is needed right but yes. from, the, from the front to the back everybody studying the difference everybody. between the leader and the lay member is the labor that's right that's the difference right. between the leader and the lay member is the labor okay mm, right. but don't sit up there and think that I go to church I'm sitting in a back pew and therefore I don't have to study because I'm getting my 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 information from the front Mm. No way. That no. is not how the body functions. Mm-mm. No, no, no. Mm-mm. No, no, no. That ain't how. The foot got to do what the foot supposed to do. The hand got to right. do what it's supposed to do. Everything That's right. has to function properly. That's right. Right? And it cannot be limp waiting on the left hand to hold up the right hand. Come we on now. like this all day. Mm. Right? We have to, we have to do something. <laughs> Y'all That's have right. to study. That's the whole point of the matter. All yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Colossians you said, 3, 17. Go ahead. You said 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, uh-huh. do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh, giving and, thanks uh-huh. to God and the Father by him. Colossians 3, 16. Oh, I thought you and, wanted 16, too. Go ahead. Yeah. Read it. Read it. You can okay. read 3, 16 and 17. I got okay. y'all. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. <laughs> In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual <clears throat> songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much reciprocation. That's so much given. Uh, it come from the top down. It come from us through us to edify the body. And we give it back to God because we do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Psalms 119, 96 through 98. I can do uh, two more scriptures that go with that, but I ain't going to do it. I have, yeah, hold, hold still. Wait, wait. Do Psalms one, one through six, and then and then we can do Psalms one nineteen, because they they go together. They just beautiful together. That's easy. Well, not the cows. That part. That part. <laughs> that part. All right, mate. He just. Like, yeah, y'all got, y'all got to understand what it is. The blessings, the honor, the glory. The, ah, it just it, it's just who we are. It is our our identity. We don't know who we are without studying the word of God. All right, go ahead, Jay. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's right. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. What's going to happen when he do? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh-huh. that bringeth forth his fruit when? in his season. Uh huh. His leaf also shall not wither, and and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly, the ungodly are not so. No, but that ain't are true. like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Toss to and fro. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. That's right. Four sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Uh-huh. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but, but the, the way, way of, of the ungodly shall perish. Perish, child. Amen. Hit 119, 96 through 98. We'll do, just sum it all on up. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Uh. Oh, how I love thy law. Uh, it is my meditation all the day. All the day. All the day. 
Though through my commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. What you say? At, though through thy commandments uh -huh. has made me wiser, wiser. than mine enemies. Uh -huh. For they are ever with me. <sighs> Ain't that refreshing? <laughs> Ain't that refreshing? The things that we get from doing the will of God by studying the word of God. What is the will of God? That you study the word of God. Why? Because it's what you need. It's what you need to function, what you need to live, what you need to grow, what you need to mature. If I didn't feed you naturally, you would die. I would see your ribs, right? I don't even want to see my dog ribs. Okay? <laughs> now, if I see your, if, if I see your ribs, oh, we got a problem. I'd rather see some weight on you than to see your ribs, right? If I see your ribs, what am I going to do? I'm going to try to feed you. Am I not? Come on in the house. You need some some substance. That's right. Right? And That's what right. do I do every Wednesday, Tuesday, Sunday? Come on in. Mm -hmm. You need some substance. That's right. Let me feed you. That's what okay. I do best. Right? Yes. So at the end of the day, it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure to feed you. But I promise you, it don't work. <laughs> it, it will not work from my mouth to your mind. All right? The Bible declares it, right? It, it, listen, there's no way, people love to be out of order. It's almost like you can't help but be out of order. God designed the order. God designed you to need somebody. God designed authority. He designed family. He designed marriage. He designed government. These things are ordered and ordained by God. And there's nothing we can do about it. You can try to overthrow it. You can try to be disobedient. You can try to be rebellious. You can do what you want to do. But guess what? There is an order of things. And that's that. Right? He didn't say, please study. He said, he didn't say, try hard to study. He says, study if you want to show yourself approved unto me. He didn't say look to the left or right. He didn't say measure your standards by the person to your left, or I'm smarter than they are, or I know more than they do, or I got to get my game up because I need to be as smart as them. He said you needed to be approved unto God. Right? And then it's to have a defense, have an answer. And you don't need to be ashamed if you can rightly divide the word. You can give an answer. You can give an account. You can witness. And then... <laughs> whatever comes your way when life happens to you you are equipped you are equipped can't nobody come tell you to eat the daggone apple and you just grab the thing and eat it that's dumb i witnessed my daughter have a baby the other day i about passed out two times if i could have fought eve to the I, if, if the lord would allow me to choke her neck i would have Cause that was a hot mess. I mean, when it I went so it, good, good hear you saying that. Cause listen, I been calling Eve all out her name, Lord, help me, Lord. But I pray about it after. Mm. Listen, I, it hurt. It, it hurt. Like if if I had to go through it myself, right? I would bear the burden for all y'all promise. Because I, I I know how it feels to me and it hurts. But 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 if I have to see you hurt, that hurts. That hurts. Mm -hmm. I had to see. My baby girl hurt. She said, God, I can't do it no more. She was talking to the Lord as if he was right there next to her. I said, oh, my Lord. And there's nothing I could do. Nothing I could do as a mom, except baby girl, you got it. Man, listen, that is not a pretty sight. That is, <laughs> I'm so mad about that. But it's men on the line, so I ain't going to talk. I have to tell you it's so off topic, but do you know Liz woke me up, told me I was crying in my sleep that night? She said, you've been crying in your sleep all night. Mm. The night TT was in labor. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Like I, I, something warm came over me. I felt like I had to vomit. And then I was like, Lord, let me sit down. If I could just get to the chair and just sit down for a second, because I'm telling you, when you get past a certain point, you feel like death is knocking at the door. And all you're trying to do is push out a baby. 
And then we got to turn around and go to work. Y'all men better go to work and bring home the bacon and pay these bills. Because I declare <laughs> that labor and having that child, <laughs> nothing compares. Nothing. <laughs> you can send me to work for the rest of my life, okay? <laughs> Just saying. No, anyway, we done. We done. We done. Praise God. We are done. Um, I